Welcome, church, to worship this morning. Bienvenidos a todos. A special welcome to guests who are with us today, and welcome to you who are worshiping with us online. Today is the first Sunday in Lent. Uh, that's why I'm decked out in purple. It's going to be my new favorite color because uh, it's my... The, the college my son got accepted into for his new baseball team is purple, so I've already started buying the clothes. Um, but actually, I, I've always enjoyed Lent and, and um, the color purple for Lent. With Lent, we um, have a new offertory hymn as we prepare the table for communion. We'll be singing, uh, We Come to the Hungry Feast in these Sundays of Lent. And also today in our worship service, following the Lord's Prayer, um, we'll be presenting scholarships to members of Unity from our endowment board, uh, Zerwi Scholarships. So we'll look forward to that as well. We continue uh, our reading of the Gospel of Mark, studying scripture under the theme, Jesus for the Struggling. And today... um, From our scripture story in Mark, we get the message, giving up or letting go? It's a question. Giving up or letting go? Today, with our online worshipers, I'll introduce our online minister. He's not here in person. He's at home online as well. Uh, One of the features of when you're feeling under the weather, you can worship online. Uh, So uh, Chad Lydon is with us doing ministry online, welcoming our online worshipers and um, taking prayer requests and facilitating conversation around our scripture message. And for those of you here in person, you can be part of that ministry as well. If you have a device with you, simply mute your device and log into our live stream worship video on Facebook Live. Uh, and interact with our worshipers online. It's through those personal interactions and building personal relationships and community together that the Holy Spirit goes to work through those human interactions um, in building one congregation in mission together. And now, church, we begin our worship in the presence of our living God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. I invite you to stand in body or in spirit as we sing our opening hymn together, song number 319, O Lord, Throughout These Forty Days, song 319.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. God of abundant grace, when you asked to give everything to follow Jesus, a rich man faltered. Grant us the courage to give everything that we have to you, knowing that the gift of life you offer is more valuable than all the riches in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with the Heavenly Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Our first reading in this first Sunday of in Lent is from Genesis chapter 9, verses 8 through 17. Then God said to Noah and to his sons with him, As for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood. And never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, This is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth, and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, This is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. This is the word of the Lord. We sing responsibly by whole verse from Psalm number 25, verses 1 through 10. The Psalms are found in the beginning of the hymn section of our hymnal, which can be found if you look at the red dashes on the facing of the pages. Right after the last red dash is the Psalm book. Uh, Psalm 25, verses 1 through 10. Our cantor, Lori, will lead us by singing the odd number verses, and we respond by singing the even number verses of Psalm 25, verses 1 through 10.
Our second scripture reading is from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 10, verses 17 through 31. As Jesus was setting out on a journey, a man ran up and knelt before him and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. You shall not defraud. Honor your father and mother. The man said to him, Teacher, I have kept all these since my youth. Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said, You lack one thing. Go, sell what you own, and give the money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. When he heard this, he was shocked and went away grieving. For he had many possessions. Then Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How hard it will be for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. And the disciples were perplexed at these words. But Jesus said to them again, Children, How hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. They were greatly astounded and said to one another, Then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, For mortals it is impossible, but not for God. For God, all things are possible. Peter began to say to him, Look, we have left everything and followed you. Jesus said, Truly I tell you, there's no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or fields for my sake and for the sake of the good news, who will not receive a hundredfold now in this age. Houses, brothers and sisters, mothers and children, and fields with persecutions. And in the age to come, eternal life. But many who are first will be last. And the last, will be first. This is the word of the Lord. Have you ever seen that old television show, Gilligan's Island? There's a great mix of characters who end up shipwrecked on an island with Gilligan, the skipper too, the millionaire and his wife, the movie star, the professor and Marianne. Supposedly, they're all stranded there with no phone, no lights, no motor car, not a single luxury, like Robinson Crusoe, it's primitive as can be. And yet... Did you ever notice that the millionaire, Thurston Howe III, and his wife, Lovey, are always surrounded by luxury? The millionaire took with him on that fateful chartered boat ride hundreds of thousands of dollars in cash and several changes of expensive clothing outfits. On a three-hour tour. 
a three-hour tour. Talk about obtuse, out of touch with reality. A running gag on the show is how the other characters play along with the millionaire's delusion of his wealth, even though they know his fortune on the island is completely worthless. Clinging to what he's invested in most, not just the money itself, but invested in his image, invested in his sense of self-worth, invested in how he understands his own identity. He misses out on what is obvious to everyone else. While Thurston Howell III remains concerned with maintaining his image, preserving any resemblance he can of his old way of life, separating himself and avoiding the effort of lifting a finger for what the group needs to accomplish. All the others realize they are in this together. Whether they ever manage to get off the island or whether they have to find a way to survive and live there, they realize path forward is one of mutual interdependence in community together. Now the kindness and love of the community would win over Thurston Howell so that he was included, but without that same commitment to mutual interdependence, Whenever a new challenge arose, Thurston would eventually give up. Giving up is what happens when we can't let go of what we're holding on to that's holding us back. Because it's in letting go that we are open to embrace the new gift that's presented to us. For example, take a look at the rich man in the scripture story from Mark's gospel. He gives up on his quest for the life eternal because he won't let go of what he clings to to what he values more, what he decides to rely upon, what he chooses to place his trust in. Letting go is hard to do. That's true for anything we value and cling to, but it's especially true of wealth. How hard it will be for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. Oh boy. What if we can't let go of wealth? Do we just give up? Letting go is really difficult when it comes to wealth. Yes, I do mean wealth. It's amazing how so many interpretations of this story will try to spin and make it to be about something else, anything else. That's how much we really value wealth in our society and cling to the notion that wealth is inherently good, such that we're going to protect it from being critiqued by Jesus. However, Jesus couldn't be more clear. He means what he says. And yes, I do mean that I am 
among the wealthy. I may not be a billionaire. I'm not Thurston Howell III, whom his wife Lovey once commented that he suffered through the Great Depression, just like everyone else, by dropping from a billionaire down to a millionaire. But I do recognize that simply by living in the wealthiest country in the world, no matter the struggles I may face, I am still among the wealthiest of the world's population. So this scripture challenges me. As I hope It challenges each of us. I struggle with it. And I hope you will allow yourselves to struggle with it too. The Americanized version of the Christian religion bends head over heels with intellectual somersaults trying to find ways not to struggle with Jesus' teachings about wealth. Three times, in three Gospels, we hear the story of Jesus telling the rich man, in order to inherit life eternal, he must first sell his possessions, give the money to the poor, and come and follow him. Three times. And he tells the rich man this all quite openly, in broad daylight, in front of other people, An obvious public teaching, a teaching to which Jesus' disciples respond to it. Whereas on the other hand, one time, only once, in one of the Gospels do we hear the story of Jesus telling Nicodemus that in order to be saved, he must be born again from above. This happens in the middle of the night, when Nicodemus sneaks out to see Jesus in secret, when no one else is around to hear that teaching. Guess which one of these teachings, the Americanized version of Christian religion, distorts without applying to anyone? And which one of these teachings, the Americanized version of the Christian religion, takes literally and applies universally to everyone. Yep. Spreading out of the United States in recent centuries, we have a whole born again, say this Jesus prayer, and you will be saved religion based on something Jesus said to one person, one time, in the middle of the night, in secret, with no one else around, talking only to that one person. But why shy away from making disciples of Jesus based on a core teaching of Jesus that is repeatedly shared in public for everyone to hear to which his community of disciples actively responded? How central is this teaching for being a disciple of Jesus? Oh, it's only the very basis by which Jesus calls people into his community to follow him in his mission and experience life eternal together. That's all. Peter heard this teaching and said, Hey, look, Jesus, we have left everything and followed you. Indeed you did, Jesus said. When each of Jesus' disciples heard Jesus call them, they left their businesses. They left their way of life. They left their family support systems. They left everything. They then relied on trusting in the generosity of the people they encountered. They then pulled their resources together in a common purse. They then learned to take nothing extra with them in doing Jesus' mission and bringing help and healing 
to those who are struggling. Like the castaways on Gilligan's Island, the disciples of Jesus live the way of mutual interdependence in community together. Jesus reminded them when they struggled in hearing this teaching that in their commitment to mutual interdependence, they are already experiencing the life eternal. Yes, for now, that does include the struggles of persecutions on account of following Jesus. But in the age to come, through those struggles, followers of Jesus will experience the fullness of eternal life. So as we are starting our journey of Lent, a time of renewed spiritual discipline as we take to heart Jesus' call of discipleship to pick up our own cross and follow him. We begin with a bang. A difficult but central teaching of Jesus. We do well not to water it down. Not to point fingers at others we think are more wealthy than us and then exclude ourselves from it. Not to make excuses. But instead, to allow ourselves to struggle with this teaching that Jesus gives to us. For what will it profit us to gain the whole world And lose our lives. Yet when we give up our lives for Jesus' sake. And for the sake of sharing the good news of God. We find among us. The life eternal. As we have been studying the gospel of Mark under this theme. Jesus for the struggling. We confess. We are struggling in our calling to live each day as his disciples. It is oh so difficult to let go. But the struggle is worth the effort. For in our confessing of our struggle, we discover Jesus for us. Thanks be to God. We sing together song number 517. Lord, keep us steadfast in your word. I invite you to stand in body or in spirit as we sing together song Five, one, seven.
you in hand those hymnals, I invite you to turn to the inside of the back cover where you'll find the Apostles' Creed. We confess our faith together with the church that has given witness before us and the church around the world using the words of the Apostles' Creed. Let us now proclaim the faith of Christ's church. I believe in God, the Father. Rejoicing in God's promises, let us pray for the world, for the church, and for all who are in need. Each of the prayer petitions ends, Lord, in your mercy, to which the congregation responds by saying, hear our prayer. Let us pray. God of creation, We pray for the shalom of all creation, the peace and harmony of all living things. As the rainbow reminds us of your covenant of faithfulness, turn our hearts in hope for the fulfillment of your promise. Lord, in your mercy. God of all peoples, bring comfort to victims of violence, to those who have experienced gun violence in Kansas City, in Houston, and elsewhere. Protect those who live under the threat of violence in their own homes and bring justice to restore safety and wellness. Lord, in your mercy. Faithful God, help us as Jesus' disciples to let go of anything we hold on to that holds us back from placing our complete trust in you. We give you thanks on this day of commemoration for Martin Luther, renewer of your church, for helping us to hear the good news of your abundant grace. Lord, in your mercy. God of comfort, send your spirit of wholeness upon all who need healing in body, mind, or soul especially to everyone on Unity's prayer list, including Cindy, Susan and Betty, Paul, Donna, Paula, Kathy, Izzy, and Lee, and the Hernandez family. Lord, in your mercy. Beloved children of God, Please offer any prayers you may have at this time, either spoken aloud in the silence of your hearts or typed into the comments of our live stream worship video. Lord, in your mercy. Eternal God, in following Jesus, we find eternal life amid the struggles we experience. And in the age to come, life eternal comes to us in its fullness. Until that new day, hold us in the fellowship of your Holy Spirit with all your saints in light. Lord, in your mercy, into your hands, O God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through your Son, Jesus the Christ, our Lord. Amen.
gathered in the presence of our Savior Jesus. Let us pray in the words he has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Peace of Christ be with you always. Let us share a sign of Christ's peace among us. Church, you may be seated. This time going to invite to come forward. Jill Wisniewski serves as treasurer of Unity's Endowment Board, and we are going to present some scholarships. Good morning. Um, this year, the Zerwees Higher Education Endowment Board is pleased to share that we um, awarded $64,000 in scholarships for this year. Um, the applicants are requested to reflect on their spiritual journeys and answer these three questions. Um, where do you see Jesus? How do you serve the community? And when have you invited others about learning about Jesus and seeing our community? It's always impressive every year to see the reflective and um, really thoughtful responses that the applicants provide us. Uh, this year we had two recipients from outside of Unity, one pastor from Tanzania and an ap uh, applicant from uh, St. Stephen the Martyr, Nora. This year, we would like to introduce the Unity members who received a scholarship. If you're present, if you would just stand where you're um, seating, seated uh, when I say your name. Uh, Kim Marie, Amber, Junior, Zeke, Maya, Andrew, Anna, and Ava. So congratulations. Um, The intent of the scholarships is to assist, you guys can sit down, thank you, um, is to assist the kids in their continuing education, not just kids, we have adults that are also applying, um, and that we hope that we can take a little bit of the financial pressure off of their educational journeys. Turn on my mic. As Joni begins our ministry messages, I'll ask our ushers to begin sharing our offering. Um, this is our last bake sale announcement. Uh, Tuesday is the election. Uh, if you have questions about dropping off your baked goods, you can do that uh, tomorrow during office hours, which are 9 until 2, or anytime on Tuesday. We're hoping we're just going to get rid of everything and we're going to need replacements on Tuesday. Um, Helpers are needed on Tuesday to greet our neighbors, um, and you are welcome to come at any time. Come when you can, leave when you must. Uh, and members are also welcome to come and get your own home-baked goodies as well, um, even if Unity is not your polling place. Uh, and then I do ask that all of you prayers get busy and pray for the success of our bake sale. And I'll see you again soon about our plant sale. Oh, um, the polling place is open from 7 until 7. So I will be here at that time, but you come anytime. Okay? And I'll see you again real soon about this, the plant sale that's coming up this spring. Jody, thank you so much for spearheading this uh, great opportunity in ministry for us to greet our neighbors and build relationships. Um, and I can't wait next Sunday to hear all about it, hear how it goes. And hopefully we can build on it from here. This is our first go at it. Um, and it's a small, smaller election, um, but there will be other elections. This is our first time ever having an election here. Uh, and 
And if it goes well, then we have a greater opportunity in the future. So uh, for everyone, everyone has an opportunity to be involved in one way or another, uh, even if it's in, in prayer. Um, so thank you all for your support in the ways that you're supporting. Our Lent Bible study that was scheduled for Monday evenings is canceled, but we have a big week of ministry ahead of us. Unity's Reconciling in Christ's core team invites you to watch the movie Just Mercy right here at 2.30 p.m. today. It's the film version of the book club's selection this winter. And then on Tuesday, you just heard about our Election Day Art of Neighboring Ministry with the big sale and hospitality. This Wednesday, Unity's community meal for February starts at 5.30. So please come for dinner with our neighbors and build community by turning a stranger into a new acquaintance and a familiar acquaintance into a new friend. See God's love abound if you'd like to serve either before, during, or after the meal, please see Lynn Rinderly. And then next Sunday, season two of Watching the Chosen will start up after Coffee Connections and will continue each of the following Sundays. Today, as always, after uh, worship ends, we have Coffee Connections to uh, greet one another and check in on how life is going. Our kids' time ministry, uh, our, our teacher is sick, uh, so we won't have that. And just a reminder for those of you who uh, plan on joining our congregation next week, we're going to meet for an introduction and Q&A right behind that wall. There's a conference room. So uh, after you get your coffee connections, your coffee and your cookies, we'll just go through that door and make a left turn for our time together. And anyone who'd like to join us to meet our new members joining, come into the Disciples Conference Room with us. And now as we prepare the table for communion, we sing together song 479, We Come to the Hungry Feast. Church, please stand in body or in spirit as we sing together song 479. Supper. You who are worshiping with us online are most welcome, invited, encouraged to partake in this meal of God's grace simply by having, wherever you may be, some bread, a cup of wine, or a cup of grape juice. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God of the universe. Your mercy is everlasting, and your faithfulness endures from age to age. Praise to you for creating the heavens and the earth. Praise to you for saving the earth from the waters of the flood. Praise to you for bringing the Israelites safely through the sea. 
Praise to you for leading your people through the wilderness to the land of milk and honey. Praise to you for the words and deeds of Jesus, your anointed one. Praise to you for the death and resurrection of Christ. Praise to you for your spirit poured out upon all peoples. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is God's new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. With this bread and cup, we remember our Lord's Passover from death to life. O God of resurrection and new life, pour out your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts of bread and wine. Bless this feast. Grace our table with your presence. Reveal yourself to us in the breaking of the bread. Raise us up as the body of Christ for the world. Breathe new life into us. Send us forth, burning with justice, peace, and love. To you, O God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory through your church made holy, now and forever. Amen. Church, you may be seated. To you who are worshiping online, this is the body of Christ given for you. And this is the blood of Christ shed for you. Our Lord Jesus comes to us in the eating and drinking of this meal of God's grace. And it's all about grace for the struggle. No matter what your struggle has entailed, we find that in embracing the struggle and embracing one another in the struggle, we discover there is Jesus for us. Come and discover Jesus for you. All are welcome, for the gifts of God are. As we come forward to receive Holy Communion, we are invited to sing together song number 471.
And now, church, the real presence of our Savior Jesus through this meal of God's reign bless you, strengthen you, and hold you in God's grace. Amen. Our sending hymn today is song number 624, Jesus Still Lead On. As we sing together, I invite all kids, youth, and anyone who'd like to come forward to help send us out, come on down during the singing of the hymn. And the rest of us, church, please stand in body or in spirit as we sing together song number 624.
Church, I invite you to raise a hand of blessing to one another. Say the benediction together, repeating after me in the language of your own choosing. Yamada por Dios, called by God. Vaya con Dios, go with God. In the mission de Jesus, in the mission of Jesus. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good.